in Poole on the south coast of England. Gaza, yeah. How has Gaza ended up living here? Do these people know that Paul Gascoigne is their neighbour, you know? Big man, how are you? Hey, nice to uh, meet you. Very good to see you, mate. Right? You're going to be for a surfboard with that quiff. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is this your place? Uh, it's Katie's, me manager's, so I'm just staying there at the moment until I find somewhere to live. You like that to be perfect, do you? Yeah. Uh, get up, do all this again, tell you that, put them put against the wall, make sure they're okay. You've got your glasses yeah. perfectly laid out for someone who's a bit OCD and yeah. your cigarettes all ready to go. Yeah, they're all ready. I didn't stall, I was 36, it was England players got me smoking. Was it? It was you in 96. It was six of the players having a cigarette. And I went, oh, give us a go one of them. I went, oh, that's okay. Next thing I'm fucking smoking cigarettes. It says on the box, smoking kills, but I've tried fucking everything else, mate, so... <laughs> <laughs> I try not to watch football, because I still miss it so much. How many coffees a day are you on? Sometimes I can get, like... If I get up at 6 o'clock, by 10 o'clock, I've had about six. Six? How terrible I am. He has about 15 of these a day. The packets of mocha. Yeah, you get to put yeah, yeah. mocha on the other one, the toffee crunch one. Variety pack. <laughs> like fucking dog food coffee. <laughs> Not for you. Coffee. No, there's another one called dog shit. That's gingerbread. <laughs> no thanks. A mince pie coffee. Are you kidding me? Is every day a battle not to drink? No, no, it's easy really. You Is know, it? I just yeah, I just keep away from the places. You know, I just do the right things. I keep me yeah. well and sober, like you know. Do you have alcohol in the house, or do you? No, no alcohol in the house. No. She may do, but I can sniff it out. But you know, never. I never bother really because I've told Katie if I want to drink. If it was here, he wouldn't like. He wouldn't go near it anyway. Like, right. if, you know, when he's sober, he's so sober. You can, you know, that he yeah. can go off and do his own thing, and he's fine. But have you worked out then why sometimes you just aren't sober? Uh, no, I just, you know, so I like being sober. There's no problem, like you know. But you know, let's say if I have a, have a drink, I have a drink just because I want one. It's not for any any reason. Yeah. I don't blame anyone. I used to blame loads of people when I was drinking. I was fucking because he did that, or he did that, she did that. My family said this. <laughs> you actually said to me, I'll, in Paul's book, a lot of the time he blames other people for things that went wrong, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. No. So, like, because you wrote that book 20 years ago, yeah, didn't you? I was reading that. it, and well, you just I can see that mindset, you know? yeah. Yeah, why do you ever drink for? Because such and such did anything, you know? I, I just... So what changed then that made you realise? I just, well, when I went on the first couple of meetings and I did the sponsor, I did the 12 steps, and one of the steps, all the people that he had blamed, he had to actually go and meet them and apologise to them, so I did that. Who? Who did you go to uh, meet? Mate, got to make amends just to let you know that I stole a bar of chocolate from your shop. He went, I know, we've got you on CCTV, but because it was you, we just left you. I went, have you? You went, come and have a look. So I went in his office and he's put me on CCTV. He went, there you are, coming into the shop. He went, but that's OK. You know what, though, that sums up you, because I think everybody wants the best for Paul Gascoigne, don't they? Yeah, I'm fortunate that way, you know. You know, like you, the best one, Katie rang us up. And I was crying my eyes out, but that was a few years ago. And then when the FA, what I've put myself through and other people, and like you say, jail and rehab and took cocaine off toilets, leech years, and that was years ago, 18 years ago or something. And then getting asked to be ambassador for my country. <laughs> I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I'll start crying to be fair. These bastards want me kicked out of Euro 96. That's all I think thinking about it. So I got me jacket and that before Gascoigne ambassador at the FA and that. You were an ambassador for your country. Yeah. Right? You've put more smiles on people's faces as an England player than many people. And I, I think in some ways it's kind of it's kind of sad that you find it hard to watch football. Because yeah. you gave the sport so much and the sport gave you so much. Now, when I look back at it, I think, whoa, it's quite frightening, you know, when I see some of the clips, I go, whoa, how did I get through that? Oh. Lacho, when I signed for them, he's like 30,000 at the airport. And I'm not expecting that, you know? Next minute, you've got like 22 bodyguards around you. What interests me is that Bobby Robson famously called you daft as a brush when yeah. you were 22. And yet, to go and be able to pick up Italian at the age of 24, 25, mm. isn't somebody that's daft as a brush. Yeah, was, I know. It was funny, because Terry Vettel was like, Lacho, when he, who's Lacho? And he went Italian. And I went, Gava, I can't even speak English, I mean, fucking Italian, man. It doesn't happen by accident again. A bit like the rest of your career, there was this hard work that wasn't seen by people. Oh, yeah, I know. The amount of work I put in, training, you know, non-stop. Like, last year, I'd, like, sometimes we train twice a day, but I'd, like, do a bit myself, then train with them, then some in the afternoon, then train again with them, and then at night time. So sometimes I train five times a day. And do you think about your legacy of what people will say about you as a, 
as a man and a footballer. Me, well, you know, when you get called national treasure, and then people still stopping you all the time for signatures or selfies. The last time it was Sainsbury's, and there was a guy coming. I was walking down the aisle, and there was a guy coming, and he's come up to us, and he stopped crying his eyes out, went on his knees, crying. And his kids, two kids, were staring at me as if I'd like had a fight with them. I went, get up, man, the kids are crying. He went, but you're my hero, and he was really crying. I went to give him a hug, and then the kids were all right after that. I'm like, wow, it's nice to see them. He said, and I say to my mates, I don't call them fans, because it's really nice to them. Because my dad, years and years and years ago, when I first made my debut against Liverpool, I went home, I said, I got man a match. He went, right, I just remember where you come from. And since then, he says, because you never know one day you might need these fans. And he's spot on. So for like, since I was 17 to even now, I don't turn down an autograph or a photo. And everyone like, Kaza, can you remember that goal you scored against Scotland? Mate, do you remember it? I fucking scored it, of course I remember it. When we interviewed Gary Lineker, he said there's not a day goes by where he doesn't think about the 1990 semi-final. I'm yeah. interested, how often do you go back and think about... Well, the 1990, I didn't take a penalty as such. And, you know, I was obviously devastated getting that card, but... You know, I was more devastated because I had the, like the best time in my life. You know, it's, it's that such a young age with great players, but actually like training every day in the sun, enjoying myself, fantastic. You know, and it's like, wow, this is the life. And then when it come to the end, it's like well, I honestly thought my career. Well, I was only 22 and a half. I think God, my career's over with now. I'm never going to play again. That was in my mind. Yeah. And then when I got back home, I I was having a, a shandy with my dad. And I said, Dad, I'll see you later. And it was 10 o'clock at night, and I went up to the park on my own, where I used to play when I was seven years of age and that, and still crying my eyes out. And God, this is where I've just come from, oh. from here to the And why did that affect you so much? Oh, incredible. I just couldn't wait to get back playing again, so I got the pre-season over. And that season after that, 91, I couldn't put a foot wrong. I was scoring goals for one, for fun, scoring every game in the FA Cup and that. I was just I was buzzing. You know, I, couldn't, I just felt I just couldn't, couldn't, I was untouchable. You know, I get a man a match all the time. And then, you know, obviously the goal, doing the dentist chair and that, obviously the Gareth Southgate, I hate it when I see it. Gareth, can I have a word with you? What? I can't understand, I scored my penalty against Germany, I go to fucking rehab. She says, you miss your penny, you get a 30 grand pizza advert in the England manager's job, what the fuck did I do wrong? Don't tell anyone that, guys, I says, everyone does. He just laughed. I wonder, you know, when the ball comes across before oh, the Shira, penalties. Yeah. That's like, do you ever, I still think about that. I can't you? watch that. You can't. I because... think if, if that was Shira or Linegar, they would have scored that because their instinct is just, you know, but I'm thinking ahead. And I, honestly, when I seen it come across, I thought the keeper was going to get a touch. Now, if he got a touch of it, it would have went behind us. So I've just waited for that touch and I would have tapped it in. If I'd have just kept on going forward, it's not just the thing that could have scored that. It's what goes through mine. It's me celebration. Just a celebration. I don't know what it is. See the conversation right now on the High Performance app.